Good evening YouTube and welcome to my garage. Today I'm going to go ahead and introduce how it is that I set up for moto vlogging. What is it I do? How do I do it? How do I keep the profile slim? How do I keep the contraption from weighing everything down? How do I stage my microphone? And how did I get there? So I will go ahead and cover all of these items with you over the course of the next few minutes. I have a new helmet that I would like to use for moto vlogging, but it's not currently set up. I've already worked on it. Right here we have an HJC CL17. It's a pretty quiet helmet. What I really like about it is that it doesn't fog up. It's got a pin lock in it, but even before the pin lock was in there, it did a really good job of not fogging up. It also uh, actually does a really good job with these Venturi vents that it has on top. It evacuates uh, a lot of my breathing, so I, when I wear glasses inside my helmet, those don't fog up either. Overnight, I'd set up one of these adhesive pads, so it should be good to go by now. Now, normally I would use a curved one, except the, the way that the surface of this particular helmet went, I could get more contact with the flat one. And then I added some additional 3M adhesive tape uh, to the edges just to make sure that there was more contact. It's been sitting on here for about 24 hours. I'm fairly confident in its holding ability. I haven't had anything that I've used the 3M tape with a GoPro mount uh, ever come loose and they're subjected to heat and vibrations and, and everything else. So I'm fairly confident that this is gonna work out. Okay, so while we're handling this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the visor because I, I'd rather not cause issues with it, smudge it or have to clean it, scratch it by accident. So I'm just going to pop the visor off. So what microphone am I using? I am using the Sony ECM CS3. I have uh, less than gently removed the clip that comes on it because you don't need it. It is a stereo microphone. It has left and right. It does pretty good on its own. Uh, previously, I'd taken some of the little wind socks off of these little kneewear microphones that I've got and stuffed those on there, zip tied them on. And on previous arrangements in my helmet, what I had done was I simply just ran the wire underneath the chin curtain. And I don't know if the GoPro can pick it up or not. When you see, I lined the inside with Velcro. And I would just use a piece of Velcro to stick the microphone in there. And then I could pull it out and use it somewhere else if I wanted to. But what I found was when the microphone was right underneath my nose like that, I always sounded like Darth Vader and I was always huffing and puffing even when I wasn't exerting myself. So I didn't like the way that sounded. Plus if wind came in underneath the chin curtain or the chin bar on the helmet, then it would also catch a lot of that. But mainly I wanted to get it out from right in front of my nose because that just created its own set of problems. Ultimately what I did was I hit it inside of a cheek pad. And that's what I intend to do here with this HJC. Mind you, I haven't had this chin pad out yet. And to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure that I need to completely remove it to do what I need to do here. So this next step right here is the part that's gonna make you cry. Um, if you're real sensitive about your helmets and you don't wanna do this, then don't do it. This is simply what I do. And I'm sure the, dis the legal disclaimers out there for HJC or Built or the other Icon and, and AFX and the other helmets I have sitting up there. I'm sure that they would all tell you that this of course is not a good idea We all get that we're all adults. We all know what we're getting into here Most of them would void expectations of what the helmet can do simply by putting a, a camera on the helmet in the first place So being that it everything is that way. We'll go ahead and get started here So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of surgery very minor surgery that no one can see we're on the inside of the cheek pad here so we come up to the cheek pad. I'm just gonna make a very easy cut, just big enough to stuff this little microphone in there. I cut a little hole and we are going to force these pieces out, tear a little bit of the foam out and then stuff our microphone in there. And that's gonna provide a lot of the sound deadening that you need for the wind. It's going to protect the microphone so that your breath won't always transmit to it and uh, you can have your visor up and, and, and it really won't make a lot of difference in the sound quality. Let's get to that part. So I don't know if you can see it now. I, I'm guessing I have the GoPro strapped to, I have the GoPro strapped to my forehead so um, I don't know if you can see it 
but the microphone's slipping in there pretty nice. I'm going to cut away again, but I'm, I'm going to, when I come back, it should be nice and level. The only thing sticking out is this little bit of wire. And there you have it. It's done up quite well. And if you're concerned about it, you could always secure this with a piece of tape, but you're going to snap it back in. So there's really not a lot of need for uh, securing this. It's, it's really, it, it, the integrity is going to be there. Your face is going to be pushed against this pad right here. You may even be able to feel it just a little bit inside of there. The next part is to zip up the excess microphone wire. Now we go to snap everything back in. So now we're looking at the bottom of the helmet. You can see that the speaker wire comes out right here. And this is a good place to conceal it too. So the next time you do take the camera off, you can just take this extra bit of wire and just stuff it right up in there. So now we have our a nice, neat, very short piece of wire to plug our microphone into our GoPro. So I'm going to show you another little trick here that I like to do. So I like to use the GoPro on multiple helmets, which means moving it from one helmet to another. One of the things that I like to do is I will come over here because I use this skeleton case most of the time. And I'll take a Sharpie and I will mark along the top. And this crosses over the J-hook that we're getting ready to use plus the piece of the frame that goes through the J-hook. And I'll explain why that helps later on. So what are the pieces I like to use? As you can see on this helmet here, all that I use is a J-hook. That's it. Now there are other pieces that you can use. I'm going to go ahead and start taking this one apart and you'll get to see how it all goes together and how relatively easy this is to do to just move the camera from one helmet to another. All right. So this is what my helmet looks like without the GoPro on it. Obviously I can take the J hook off and then tuck my wire up underneath the cheek pad and it's good to go. It's just going to have the GoPro mount sitting there. Now I like to leave the J hook on there and the reason is, the reason I marked it is because I'm going to use another J hook on this helmet. So now what happens is when I go to mount the camera on this one, those little gold lines right there. So now when I hook my camera up here, test it out and I get myself into position to where I feel like the camera is in maximum viewability and I like the recording angle, I will then take my gold pen and mark it again over the exact same lines, only now it's going to leave those new lines on this J-hook. What does that mean? What that means is, is when I take this same camera in this same case and I hook it on this one, because of the curvature of the front of the helmet and the way that the mount sits on there, it's going to be aimed in a slightly different way. What this allows me to do is to quick change, put it over here. I already know that if I line up that stripe with that stripe, I've got the camera angle that I like. And likewise, once I have a stripe here, I can move it back to this helmet and have the camera angle that I like as well. It's, a, it's basically just a quick way to do it so I don't always have to bring up the app on my telephone and look and see which way the camera is angled. So if you haven't incorporated that idea, um, maybe that's something you could do. I know a lot of folks like to use the uh, helmet treatment kit that they give you for, for the GoPro, the chin mount helmet. I, I personally don't. With all these knuckles on here and doubling the camera back, it really adds a lot of, of weight and it, and it really protrudes out further. With the camera on here like this, a very simple J-hook mounted to the front of the helmet, uh, it's, a, it's a very quick connection. There's not a lot of joints, which means less vibration, less things to go wrong, really. This is the way I like to do it. Okay, so the next piece. The next piece can also be quite controversial. I've heard from a number of GoPro users that the audio cable that comes with the GoPro 3, 3 Plus, 4, I suspect. I don't have a 4, so I don't know. But this GoPro cable, it, a lot of times, can be faulty and it causes problems, so they, they buy aftermarket ones. My only experience so far with the aftermarket ones was that they'd only work on the 3 and not the 3 Plus. Sean Smoke was kind enough to send me a link to the ones that work on the 3 Plus as well, so I, I may check those out for a cleaner look. But for now, I, I, I've had pretty good success with using the regular GoPro adapter. So what I will do, okay, I will plug it in, and I will route 
the GoPro adapter behind the GoPro camera. And I make the connection. I make sure it's nice and tight in there. It's all pushed in. And then I try to wedge it up here and support it. Mind you, I have not aimed the camera yet, so it may not allow this much room underneath here. It, it's usually a little bit tighter. It is on the other cameras that I, or the other helmets that I use, including this one over here. So then what I like to do is, so many of you know that I'm in a band, and one of the things is being in a band means you have lots of band equipment. If you look across the motorcycles over here, you'll see that there are a couple of PA systems over there, and part of that includes these. These right here are cable straps. They're fantastic, they're handy, they're made of Velcro. Soft Velcro on the front, crunchy Velcro on the back. So now what I like to do is, is once I position my cable where it's going to be, one of the things that I'm always concerned about, and I think one of the contributing factors to these GoPro cable failures, is if there's weight pulling on them. So one of my concerns with using your camera like this, knowing what microphone cables will do if they're unsupported. Microphone cables unsupported, the XLR jacks will eventually cause problems within the microphone itself. So what I try to do is, is I try to bring this up here and then I try and support it by wrapping a strap around it and holding it in place. That extra support right there means that there's going to be less cable movement when the wind is pushing on it, less cable movement when the helmet's turning or vibrating or anything like that. And the idea is that it will prolong the life of the cable, but it will also prolong the life of the hole that you're plugging into. On a microphone, I can simply pull it out, resolder the ends. Not so much on one of these GoPros, and these GoPro cameras can be pretty expensive. So my main concern here is not for the $9 cable, my concern is for the $300 replacement camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and show you folks what I'm talking about. And so there you go. Now I have my new, nice new HJC CL17 motorcycle helmet with a nice tidy GoPro Hero Plus 3 bolted to the front of it. No wires sticking out and dropping and swinging around. The cable is secured with a cable strap. It's all tucked up in there. It minimizes movement of the cable connector. It minimizes damage to the micro USB port that you're plugging into with your microphone. So there you have it. If we open it up on the inside, you see absolutely nothing. There's a cable right here. Once I put my chin skirt back in, the chin skirt will cover this up. This tucks in right underneath it. It's really a non-issue. Whenever I want to take the camera off, the only thing that will be on there is the glued on piece, throw the J-hook in my bag, and tuck the remaining part of the microphone cable up underneath the cheek pad and forget about it. There you go. That's how I do it. And if I want to quick change it, I unscrew it here, take it, put it on there, line it up with the gold stripe, and we're good to go. And that's it.